This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight. Despite not having the numbers, one opposition MP says the vote of no confidence against the Prime Minister is to prove a point. Plus, the union that represents public servants pushing government on salary increases for workers. And a Bahamian actor returns home to make an impact on his community. news is brought to you by Alive. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. Angliston MP Glennis Hannah Martin says while the PLP's parliamentary team knows they won't have the numbers to be successful in their bid to move a vote of no confidence in Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, there's a point they're trying to make. Finance Minister Peter Turnquist said recently it would be a waste of time for the opposition to move a vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister over government's handling of a lease to rent space in the town centre mall for the general post office. The leader announced it and so it is the uh, mandate of, the, um, of our position. Um, I think that, I think that the, uh, of course we, we know we can't win it. I think the most um, that we will get out of it is that we will begin, we will be able to again um, repackage the arguments about um, all of these controversial matters and, and present a compact argument to the Bahamian people. Once the move is put forward, parliamentarians will have to take a vote. The House of Assembly is adjourned until October 2nd, which means that the move can't be put forward by the opposition until then. I think it's more a political exercise for the Bahamian people than um, the, the desire to achieve any pragmatic result in the parliament itself. Bahamas Public Services Union President Kimsley Ferguson says he and the members of his bargaining unit will be meeting with the Prime Minister on August 12th to find out the position of the government on salary increases for public servants. I want to take this opportunity to apprise those persons who are part of the bargaining unit of Bahamas Public Services Union that we would have had a brief dialogue with the Prime Minister concerning salary increases. Um, after we would have concluded all the non-financial aspects of the agreement, uh, we go back to see him sometime on the 12th of this month to find out what the position of the government is going to be regarding salary increases. And so we just want to cause our members to rest assured that we are feverishly working and agitating to ensure that they get some sort of funding in their hands to assist with back to school for the children. Ferguson said after evaluating the average paycheck of a civil servant and subtracting the cost of living and taxes, he will not stand aside and allow workers to be taxed to death. I understand that the country is in a particular financial position. Hence, uh, amidst the numerous increases that we would have had in value-added tax and the cost of living, there is indeed a concern. I would have um, yesterday done some calculations of a person whose salary would have been some $1,800 per month, uh, minusing 12%, hence another 5% for cost of living increases. That reduced that person's salary to $1,504. And so we need to ensure that those persons' head can be brought back above water. That's a concern for the union. And we're not going to sit idly by and allow people to be taxed to death. In other news, FNM Chairman Carl Culmer said the party is moving to increase youth involvement. Calmer said the innovation of young people is incredible and they will be harnessing that to make the party and the country better. You will see young people um, going in the forefront, um, to, uh, continue with um, positions in the, in the, in the party. Uh, they will be continue um, representing at, at board levels. Um, they, you will see them represent at, at national levels um, and the planning and, and move forward, you, um, even uh, in, in government. Culmer added that the party is planning for its future, and when the current MPs move off the scene, they'll ensure that there is a competent crop of young people to take over. Looking at succession planning, uh, and, and to ensure that once um, this lot of politicians come off the scene, we have a group of, of seasoned, um, young, but experienced politicians uh, to replace 
the politicians that, that are on the scene today. In news from the crime beat, one man is in hospital fighting for his life after police say he was shot multiple times last night. We're told it was shortly before 8 p.m. when the man was walking on Spence Alley off Wilson Track. He was reportedly approached by a group of men, one armed with a firearm who shot him multiple times about the body before running away. The shooting victim was taken to hospital where at last report he was listed in serious condition. Police are making their usual appeal for anyone with information regarding this incident to contact the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991 or 2 Crime Stoppers at 328 TIPS or the nearest police station. Meantime, officers have one man in custody in connection to one of a few armed robberies yesterday. A woman was at her residence on Jasmine Drive off Prince Charles Drive Friday morning when she was approached by two men, one armed with a firearm who robbed her of her handbag and a red 2007 Nissan Note license number AH0045. Thanks to quick work by the Central Detective Unit, the vehicle was intercepted while on Burnett Road and a 24-year-old male arrested. Then around noon yesterday, another female was robbed of her handbag containing cash and other items by an armed bandit. In the third incident, two females were approached by an armed man who stole their handbags before fleeing. Now police are seeking the public's assistance in identifying and locating the other persons responsible for these armed robberies. In other news, school supplies, food, and an encouraging word. That was the premise behind the event, A Celebration of Love, which was held in Baintown recently. Hollywood actor Van Brown, who is a former resident of Baintown, said he returned to his roots once again to impact his community. Our Julian Gray tells us more. Hollywood actor Van Brown left the Bahamas more than a decade ago to pursue his dreams. And while he no longer resides in the Bahamas, Brown has returned every year for the last 11 years for one purpose, to help his community. Every single year we want to pick a home where we literally redeveloped the number one issue when I spoke to the representative, Mr. Travis Robinson, he said the number one issue is roofing, meaning when hurricane comes, everything is flooded, all the things are destroyed, so we want to partner with some of the local uh, construction sites to redevelop these homes. We simply want to let the community know that they're not forgotten. This is not giving a handout. This is assisting while maturing the brain so they can literally fight for themselves. His long-term goal is to build a community center in the Baintown area. A family property has provided the perfect lot for the facility. However, Brown said funding is a challenge. Our vision is to build this community center state-of-the-art rival with any other community center and to have it so aesthetically beautiful. Just visually, the kids will be transformed by seeing it, saying, wow, this is actually for us. And it doesn't stop there. We want to build those in all of the forgotten communities of Nassau and then throughout the other islands because, and then we plug in teachers and mentors so it could be around the clock training. Because as we're there in Los Angeles, it's still going on long after we've left and then we come back. Then we just keep adding and adding. The facility is estimated to cost over $1 million. Brown is currently working with home improvement show producers and investors in the United States, but said he would like to get corporate Bahamas to assist as well. This past weekend, the Baintown native hosted the 11th Celebration of Love event on Baintown Park. The event featured games, food, giveaways, and motivational speeches. One of the topics highlighted the importance of a focused mind actually talked about uh, evolving and no matter where you come from uh, how you can take your experience and make the whole life and the whole family's experience completely better. So I talked about the fact that my father was an NFL football player, but it started from them being in the United States and they were like sharecroppers and, and they came from like picking cotton. And then he went to the NFL and it changed the whole family line for us. So Lolita Robinson, who grew up in an underdeveloped area in Los Angeles, said it's always been her dream to help someone the way she was helped. Robinson said the children of the community blessed her heart more than she could have imagined. You know, we were driving up and we saw one of the children going to the well to get water. And one of the waters that she was, uh, one of the containers she was filling up had bleach on it. It was a container for bleach and she was using it for water to like, you know, use to provide in her house. And that broke my 
heart. And so it really is, you know, a privilege for me to come out here and serve because it could easily have been my family, you know. And so it just changed my whole perspective and being grateful and acknowledging that, you know, these children, they are so blessed. They're so intelligent. They're so amazing. And, you know, all they need is someone to know that they care, you know, that, that they're, that, you know, it's possible. And that's what we like to bring to them. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I'm Jillian Gray. All right, thanks a lot, Julian. We'll still ahead tonight. A former senior police recounts the days of policing during the drug era. That story and more when our news, the weekend edition, returns.